Snowman by Agea Rene. I am a white woman and I am poor. I am a white woman and I am old. A senior citizen, a so called baby boomer. I am a white woman and I have traveled far, even internationally and I have been witness to many profound changes during my lifetime. I am a white woman, and I have become ashamed of many of my race and my generation, especially the political men. Snowmen. The first president I remember in my country and in my lifetime was John F. Kennedy. Young, handsome, bold, and a true believer in and fighter for the equality of all. And I think that uh, we must pay what needs to be paid. I don't think we ought to waste any money, but I think we ought to do the job. And this will be done in a decade of the sixth. Until I came home from kindergarten one day, or was it first grade, only to be told that he had been shot in the head. And that was my first taste of politics, a politics that I was as yet too young to notice was conspicuously absent of both people of color and of women. Snowmen. I remember the Gemini program and the first American spacewalk, which so fascinated me that I pretended to be sick to stay home from grade school and watch the spectacle, which I loved. And even at that tender age, I felt proud of and for my country that day, good American child that I was. And I strongly remember the Apollo program with its race to the moon, started by our handsome, young, murdered former president. Snowmen. And at least from the political side, its purpose was to beat out our country's most sinister enemy, the Soviet Union, who we were often told wanted to destroy us and everything else on our beautiful planet in a nuclear war. They called it the Cold War, and its terrible, dark, and constant shadow of doom loomed large throughout my childhood to a point that my generation grew up truly believing that we would never live to see old age. Snowmen I adored the space program with its ongoing string of great feats by great men and I first saw with excitement, the Mission Control Center, a strange sea of scientists sitting in front of strange-looking computer consoles in their strange uniforms of lily-white shirts with black neckties with none but lily-white males to fill them. No minorities, no women, which I was only then barely beginning to notice. Snowmen. And, of course, all this culminated with the moon landing, inarguably the single greatest feat that humans had by then ever accomplished, and possibly still have, a true and profound human triumph. I was 12 years old, and once again I was proud of and for my country but far more so, I was proud of my species. And by the way, we even managed to beat out those nasty Russians. We won the race. Bonus. That is until it was soon revealed that all those lily-white scientists in their lily-white shirts had allowed the lily-white all-male politicians who cut their paychecks to play that 
race to the moon, beat those Russians card too strongly. Because the minute that the race was won, all those politician types who were really only in it for the sport and glory lost interest and immediately started slashing NASA's funding. Snowmen indeed which was not exactly what the lily white shirted scientist types had in mind. Or this space fascinated little girl either, for that matter, who had been watching it all so closely. Snowmen. Of course, in the meantime, there had been the civil rights movement. Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy, and an escalation of the Vietnam War, which soon led to protests. Lots and lots of big, loud protests. We have them to leave. They've got grievances, they've got demands, they demands on both sides, we have to talk. And then there was 1968, with its riots and fires in the street, all around the country, as both Vietnam and the Cold War raged on. But there was also 1967, the Summer of Love and Sgt. Pepper, Hate Ashbury and the Free Love Movement, and the flower power of the hippies. A time of contrasts, a time of change. Then two years later, Woodstock. Because after all, my generation really did have the best music. Snowmen It was in the 70s that I came of age with a strong hippie streak and a free love flare. And it was the women who were marching now yelling and protesting for everything from recognition, equal rights and equal pay, to bodily autonomy, at last. And they actually won some, too. The most important of which was enshrined by the Supreme Court in Roe v. Wade. Women's freedoms. What a concept. And about time, too. As not one, not two, but my first three bosses, all of them lily white and in their 60s, tried to molest me before I even turned 21. A few years later, I could have sued their asses. But at the time, there were no laws protecting women against much of anything short of rape. And these entitled assholes seemed to think that somehow I deserved it. And why? simply for the mortal sin of being young, female, and pretty. Damned snowmen. It was in the late 70s that I went to India, like many of us spiritual types of that era. Then, in the early 80s, my guru came to America, which allowed me to live in his commune for several years, which, along with my time in India, were the best years of my life. Like we were the chosen people. <laughs> Until it came to an end, of course, as utopian societies always seem to do eventually. But perhaps it's inevitable that such an intensity of magic, light, and beauty would, in time, be thwarted by the human shadow. Bhagwan's agenda was simply to raise the consciousness and of course, during all that time and through all those decades, technology had been exploding as the information age was being born. With my generation lighting the fires and leading the way, with Jobs and Gates as the main torchbearers, captains of a worldwide paradigm shift. Massive computers had led to desktop PCs, which then, with ever-increasing rapidity, led to laptops, cell phones, tablets, 
smartphones, smartwatches, etc., etc., etc. And throughout all this, the internet was born, which I loved and embraced more than most of my age. But I also recognize that the internet has become, is, and will continue to evolve into the global brain, which now, with its somewhat younger offspring, artificial intelligence, will continue to evolve into, who knows? But who cares? As the snowmen keep getting richer and richer, and that's really all that matters, right? No one has sufficient insight to know where this will lead or whether our species is capable of evolving and adapting fast enough to stay in front of it, though it's not likely. So let's just hope that that which we have given birth to is far more benevolent than we. Snowmen. I am a white woman, and I am poor. I am a white woman, and I am old. A senior citizen. A so-called baby boomer. I am a white woman, and I have traveled far. And I have seen profound changes throughout my lifetime. I am a white woman, and I am very intelligent and have several exceptional talents, including a share of the wisdom that often comes from having lived a long, eventful, and interesting life. For I am, and have always been, a fringe dweller, a person who lives on the edges, a person who has not followed the normal routes, nor trodden the well-worn paths. Instead, I've always tended to take the roads less traveled by. I am a white woman of age and maturity, and I am truly ashamed of many of the so-called leaders of my country today, because my generation and my race now make up most of their numbers. And so many of them, through their greed, lies, entitlement, loss of integrity, and fear now seem to be going to great lengths to destroy our country with its precious democracy and are actually reversing the rights that our people fought for, lived for, and died for decades ago, especially our women, our LGBTQ friends, and our people of color. Why didn't they learn from it all, as I did? Why didn't they grow and change and mature and evolve into better versions of themselves and not into these worse ones and seemingly ever worsening ones? Why don't they see the sheer cliff that they are now in their blindness running straight toward when I've been aware of that cliff for some time now. But instead, the heat, the life force, and the courage are slowly leaving them, draining out and being extinguished, a little at a time, one lie at a time, by their own cowardice and their own fear. As I watch in tears, they are allowing themselves to slowly turn into lily-white snowmen made of nothing but ice. The End